Good evening, welcome to the Hearthstone Half Hour. Uh, my name is Hammy and we're going to be picking up this evening with a continuing play of Paladin Arena. Last episode we took a quick look at an introduction to the arena and how we could put together a deck with a bit of a theme in terms of looking at cards, looking at a bit of card synergy and seeing how we could take that theme through a random draft and then seeing the deck a bit in practice. So, to continue this arena run, we are currently 2-0. Um, for those who didn't tune in last time, welcome, and we'll just have a quick run through what we tried to achieve by putting this deck together, and then we'll take it into a few more real life examples. Um, the goal of this deck was to trade quite evenly in the early game, so make sure that we got some minions down, or we managed to at least keep the table clear of minions, so our opponent was kept relatively flat on the table. Um, effectively stay on an even keel, on an even ground through the, the early and middle game and then late game come out with some sort of heavier cards. So to do this with the, the randomness that we got um, we tried to pick a reasonable mana curve of cards um, making sure that we could pick a little something at every single turn in the game. Uh, in terms of looking at what we got early we generally went for a lot of strong single cards that came out um, things that would let us trade so either things that did instant damage um, things that would give us a bit of a buff um, and in terms of the theme of the Paladin deck we also dropped a few things with Divine Shield as well generally cards that would trade well um, cheap to play, Fairy Dragon, uh, Knife Juggler things that would again deal some damage give us some survivability until we got into the middle late game sort of the, the 4 or 5 mana mark and here we could start swinging away with True Silver Champion uh, doing some various buffs and then dropping out the big minions late game to secure the win so, without further ado, let's jump on in. I'll just say hello to you in the chat. If you want to join in, ask any questions, you can always drop us a tweet on Twitter at Felcroft casts or you can jump to the Twitch TV chat which will let you have a chat with us while we're playing. Um, without further ado we have Paladin versus Shaman. So if you've not seen the Shaman deck before it relies on summoning totems to buff minions and then it's also got a lot of quick spells that will buff minions quickly as well. It's got some casting, it's got some damage, it's got a lot of stuff. Um, so my starting hand here is very high mana cards. I'm not playing any of those 7, 5 or 5 first turn. Blessing of Might, one mana, feels as though I can keep it. Um, with a, a starting hand like this I probably want some lower cost minions. Um, I could swap all of these back. Instead I'm just going to swap three. And that's coming out a bit better. Um, I still can't play anything first turn. As you can see I'm going second so I get the coin which gives me an extra mana for one turn. That effectively lets me get a turn two card or a two mana card out on turn one. So if you ever go second in Hearthstone you always get that card. He's taken his first turn so I could use the coin and get one of these turn two cards out. Um, or I could wait. I think I'm just going to get one of these out. Um, the Knife Juggler feels like a good one because if I summon a minion next turn I can do that one damage to a random enemy as you can see on the power of the card there. The Shaman can swing straight away with that Stormforged Axe and he has taken me out uh, probably quite a sensible trade. So for two mana Overload 1. The overload for Shaman ability, as you can see there, means that he has one less mana next turn. So instead of having 3 mana, he'll actually have 2. Not much else I can do there. A 2 mana summon. And the Fairy Dragon is quite a strong card in a draft. Um, it has been constructed a little bit. But as you can see, it can't be targeted by spells or hero powers, so it's fairly hard to directly damage it. Unless you're a champion who has a weapon. However, he's taking some damage. He's making sure, as you can see, that he's up on the trades at this moment in time. Um, for my turn three, I'm going to drop this Wolf Rider with charge. And I want to trade that away as well. 
So far, so good. Um, we've been even on the trades. He does have his weapon to do another couple of damage to me. So, what have we got here? Healing Totem. Does what it says on the tin. And the Armani Berserker. So, if it's damaged, that's what Enrage means. If it takes any damage and it isn't knocked out, it'll do an extra three attack. So, ideally, it'd be good to kill that in one go. Which, as a matter of fact, is what I can do. Um, with my Hammer of Wrath, deal the damage and draw a card. And that'll do. Uh, Hammer of Wrath, four mana, it's a little expensive for the damage it does, but it gives you that additional card drawer as well. Um, and in this situation, I'm quite happy to get that off the table. You can see that with his totem summoning power, two mana for a totem. He's getting out a taunting totem, so he's got a tank, he's got healing, he can hide his elementals and things behind that, so he's slowly getting the board control. Um, I'm going to want to do something about this. So, Mad Bomber, that could or could not kill something. Um, it's it's a good trading card. I could swap something away for that. The Silver Hand Knight would immediately get a couple more cards down and put a threat on him. He'd probably want to try and kill him as soon as possible. Strongform Tiger is very strong, as you can see. Uh, with stealth, it can't be attacked straight away either. I'm going to try and get a few minions on the board. Because this would also... Potentially, if neither of those two get knocked out, it will let me play Sea Giant next go. As you can see, it costs one less for each other minion on the battlefield. Um, given that there's five minions down, it's quite a cheap five mana for eight attack and eight health. Let's have a look and see what our Shaman is up to. And he also has a Sea Giant. So, if we're not careful, board control is uh, moving over. Now, mind control tech I picked for the for that battle cry, which is quite interesting. If he has four or more minions, take control of one at random. It could be great, it could be useless. Um, either way, I, can, I just can't afford to play him the Sea Giant. So the Sea Giant is a guaranteed trade um, with his Sea Giant. I don't have any tanks. Charge and Divine Shield will... With an Argent Commander, let me trade for something. I just can't stretch to knock out this Sea Giant with the Divine Shield, which is a bit of a shame. It's whether to go for the Assured Trade or the Gamble. Um, Commander, I can trade away that minion. Oh, I've made a mistake there. I forgot about the taunting minion as well. So I can get rid of him. And I can get that within striking range. Okay, so if the Sea Giant can do 8 damage to my champion, that was a bit of a mistake. I forgot about the uh, totem there. So at the moment, in terms of the, the goal of my deck, um, I did go second, but you can see that so far I've not really kept control of the board. Uh, I've not been able to clear out the Shaman's minions. So I'm in a bit of a dangerous position at the moment. I don't have a tank, I can't taunt myself, I can't take any attacks away from my uh, hero. And all it might take is a Bloodlust or something similar, and because he's got the minions on the board, he could suddenly do a lot of damage very quickly. Gonna hurt. Wind Fury, of course, lets him swing twice in one go. Lightning Bolt means he takes out my Argent Commander. And suddenly, that's a lot of damage onto my hero in a short period of time. 16 damage with the Wind Fury. And he's managed to get a taunt. This could actually be game over. Unless I can 
get rid of uh, his heavy hitting minions in one go. I don't have anything with charge. I do not have anything that can tank. I think I'm going to have to gamble. Let's see who I take and. Oh. <laughs> your opponent has four or more minions take control of one at random and it just happens to be his most heavily damaging minion. I think that's what we call luck. Oh, it's a trading card game. You do get luck as part of this. So, you can do three, you can do six. I'm, I'm not out of the woods yet and I can't attack with any of this. So what I should probably do is um, drop something else onto the board. I think the sea giant is the worst. And Although I can't attack this turn, it definitely gives him something to think about. I now have a potential 16 damage to his hero if he doesn't start trading or attacking me. Of course he's got that stone claw totem there. So I need to kill that before I can attack his hero or anything else on his board. Okay. Still got a lot of minions on the board there, so I'm by no means out of the woods. What I really need to do is get this board under control again, and as you can see, he's now pulling out all of his totems. There we go. He's now beginning to see if he can trade some things off the board. So I still have nothing with charge. So there's no point in me really, if I have to attack, I need to take away his uh, his totem. The mad bomb, I could kill something or it could just wound everything once. It's a bit of a gamble that. No point playing the Argent Protector to Divine Shield my sea giant at this point in time. The Stranglethorn Tiger is guaranteed damage next go, so that feels pretty a pretty sensible drop. And then in the absence of anything else, I'm gonna try the Mad Bomber. Let's see if he'll Am I gonna get lucky? No. Nope. I've uh, hurt myself. Excellent. The only if I get lucky in this Elven Archer kills his Stone Claw Totem. I forgot that that was a, a choice effect. So <laughs> I got lucky with the uh, the mad bomber doing one damage there. Okay, so let's have a look. I can trade this minion away. It feels like the sensible play. So now I've managed to reduce his board. I've got 13, 16, 17 damage in one turn. I think it was, I can get another 3. I can get up to 20. So unless... He clears my minions away. I'm in quite a strong position. But given that he's got nine mana and a very full hand, there's definitely something he could pull through here. It's always interesting to see when you, you see the uh, little sort of theory. Uh, red outline around the cards. I think that's your opponent looking at his cards or looking at your cards or looking at uh, minions on the table. So you have an idea as to what he's looking at or what she's thinking about, so on and so forth. Very strong card. You saw my Argent Commander come in earlier. A few trades. Okay, he's going to attack with his totem. Sensible. It takes out my uh, eight damaging minion. So he's managed to sort of even the board out. And of course the Divine Shield there means that he keeps that Argent Commander alive. So he's made a very sensible play there and got the board a little bit more flat. Okay, so I should be able to even things out here. Dropping my Argent Protector, I want to trade this so that he doesn't take damage. There's nothing else that I can attack with this go. Um, the first time I've actually used my power, I'll get a recruit down. Let's see what he's got. Remember that the shaman's got some uh, area of effect 
spell was he's got cards that can do a bit of damage to all of my minions or indeed all the minions on the table so uh, he could have something nasty lurking in his hand that suddenly wipes out my side of the board you'll see this with a lot of shaman decks some of them focus on getting a lot of minions down um, particularly in constructed obviously in, in the arena we're drafting cards so there's random chances to what cards show up in your draft and what you can actually pick a lot of them will involve getting out a bunch of minions or a bunch of totems, buffing those, um, and then swarming with a lot of attacks. You will see Shaman Murloc, doc, uh, Murloc decks, for example. Alright, if you take a look at that chap, 1-1 one, one for each other friendly minion on the battlefield, so he's a 7-7, seven, seven, very painful looking card. Um, I need to get him get him down, otherwise he's going he's gonna to be causing me some trouble. So, I think the way forward here is to one-shot trade. I will get him off the table so he's not doing me any trouble. Maybe I made a slight mistake there. I should have used the wargan and traded while he was lower attack. So yes, there was definitely a mistake if I'd attacked before I killed the other minion and killed him straight up, I would have not lost this wargan. So that was a bit of an error. I'm going to have to trade him now. And I could just totally clear his side of the board. The main reason I'm electing to clear his side of the board rather than attack his hero directly, it's that I do know there's cards like Bloodlust and some things that can suddenly power up all of a Shaman's minions, so if it's between forcing him to play the minions and getting an extra turn against uh, doing a, a bit of short term damage, particularly that I'm because I'm only at 11 health, it's probably worth playing a little bit safe in that regard. It's a very solid card, the pint size summoner. First minion you play each turn costs one mana less, so mm, pretty good in draft. Generally better, of course, if you get it earlier in the game. Um, Defender of Argus. Adjacent minions get 1-1 one, one and Taunt. Um, that is painful. Or a very good card to have in your armory. Given that my true silver champion is all I've got, I may as well play it. So now I need to do a little bit of calculating. I do have a tank up. What I really probably want to do is uh, clear away the, the dangerous stuff out on the table as much as I can. I could trade these two for the Pints of Summoner. I can heal two and then knock him out. So I'll summon that because there's nothing else I can do and that will lose me one health. Net. But we're both quite low on cards in hand. I mean, obviously he's got two. So from now, we've sort of traded quite evenly. It is... I'd say there's a bit of luck. And he's pulled a couple of very solid cards. The Fairy Dragon that we saw earlier. And I do not have many options here. I can elect to trade minion off the table. I don't know if he's going to be playing any overload cards. Feels as though taking the more damaging card is potentially the way forward. I'm not going to be able to directly trade anything down either. Uh, it's a risk. Um, so I'll take out the fairy dragon. As you can see, even though I'm healing two, I'm taking more damage. So I can I can trade a couple of these for his unbound elemental next go, but it all depends on his totems. Ouch! The reckless Rocketeer is going to get me low health. This looks as though it could probably be good game. I 
don't think there's a way out of this easily for me. Because I have to take that Rocketeer off the table. I can sacrifice myself with one. He'll be able to do two damage next go. So it really all depends on what he draws. Whatever is in his hand. If it's a spell, it's done already. There we go. Two damage and two damage. Good game. So, other one went down. We saw what a not quite so good hand for that deck actually looks like. Um, I didn't get a huge amount out early on and I wasn't able to keep the trades going. I couldn't keep that shaman's board clear and ultimately that was the main problem. He just had too many minions, he could pick off what he wanted, do damage when he wanted and that's what eventually led to me losing. Cool, so we'll play one more game of this Paladin Arena and then as promised last episode we'll jump into a little bit of Priest Constructed and have a look at Priest decks. A rogue. If you haven't seen rogues playing before, they rely on a bunch of spells, combos, poisons, a lot of weapon play, and generally board control. Um, early on in the beta, rogues were very imbalanced. Uh, they had, well, maybe not imbalanced, but they were certainly very strong in the right hands. They had a, a few killer combos uh, that could effectively clear the board. Uh, they've been sort of unbuffed or you know, neutered a little bit with a few changes. Uh, probably a slightly less popular deck and constructed, but of course in Arena, you get what you're given. Why not? Let's go for a, a crazy couple of damage with the Mad Bomber. And of course, a, a three attack. Two health card for two mana, that's always just a solid option. If I uh, had another one of him or something else, I probably wouldn't have this Crocolisk. Knife Juggler, drop down. Uh, as you can see. Every minion you summon, one damage. Surprising how that mounts up after a while. So. I could just trade it away. It feels like a pretty solid option to me. Remember the theme of this deck was to try and keep some control of the board. So I want to be going for lots of trades and coming out ahead ideally. And always down here at the Dread Corsair. One less cost per attack of your weapon. Obviously I'd rather play that when I get a true silver champion out. So we've just seen him summon a weapon and drop a poison for the extra attack. As you can see, he's just using it to keep the board clear. There's not much else I can do here, apart from drop my Crocolisk. A nice little trade, and he's dropped his tank minion there. He's also got the enrage as well, so just one damage will increase that guy's attack by three. In terms of trading options, I don't have a huge amount. Um, actually, I'm gonna have to drop at the wrong time, really, my Dread Corsair. Ideally you drop him when you've got a, a weapon out, because naturally he costs a lot less, or you can drop him for free, so that's a, a fairly solid combo. So with combo you can see that if you've already played a card this turn you can drop something else or activate a combo ability. 
That's where I got the Deathiest Bandit from. And Raid Leader, of course, buffing up minions with an extra attack. Always pretty good. So what can I do here? Um, I can buff one of my minions that's non-existent. If I drop that, it's probably just going to get traded away pretty quick. But the True Silver Champion feels like the way to go. Let's get some of the threats off the table. And I think number one on that list is the Raid Leader. Because if I, by dropping the Raid Leader off, I immediately decrease the amount of damage that those two do. If I drop that, it's not going to be healing my minions, but what it will do is certainly kill anything that decides to attack it. So it's kind of his move now. If he wants to try and reduce the uh, amount of minions on the table, he can trade one of those. I'm obviously losing the effect of this, adding additional health to my other minions. But this deck does lack taunt. That's the one challenge with this deck that I'm playing. It doesn't have too many of them. So I can't really tank much damage away from anything. I can't force his attention. That spiteful smith is painful. Give a minion a lovely little buff, apart from I don't have it. Two damage at all enemies would help me clear the board a bit for, with a Consecrate, or I could pick it off with this. Hammer of Wrath, draw a card. I can swing away. Now it does hurt me, this of course, to the tune of two damage, but I've got a ways more painful minion. I don't want to waste my Divine Shield, so I'm going to drop a Silver Hand Recruit. There we go. So remember that he did go first. Um, so we're not entirely even. But we're close to being there. Oh, sorry. A little drink. Just going for the, the knockout. No loss for him. And the raid leader, always a really good card. And here come the Murlocs. Note how he returned that to his hand and then dropped it again to summon another bandit. Good little combo there. And it's a good job now. That I save my Consecrate. As you can see, I can clear the board. I was thinking about playing that last turn, so it was a reasonably good idea to <laughs> save it till this turn. Very satisfying. Very satisfying. Um, and we can summon a couple of Lobby minions as well. <laughs> Can't play my Sea Giant. I could bless something next go, but. Let's just wait and see. And the uh, Divine Shield is very nice too. Now, he's going to attempt to force me into a trade here. Ooh, intriguing possibilities. I'd probably rather do that forward damage to the enemy here, eh? Rather than the overkill. So we may as well do that trade. I'll, I'll take the, the two damage. I'll summon that. You know what? As long as I buff this with Blessing of Kings next go, that Divine Shield isn't entirely wasted. So whether that's the wisest play or not, I don't want to waste the mana. So I'll get that on the table for two mana, even though it means I have to give a 1-1 one, one a Divine Shield. Obviously I've got the Blessing of Kings in hand there to make him a 5-5 five, five if I so choose. Good, I can trade away that Cult Master next go. He can do one damage. He can... whatever that card is. What's he going to do? I think he'll probably take away the Divine Shield. For one health. Okay. Okay, we've got options. I think. F yeah, let's trade that away. 
uh, could be a misplay if I'd wanted to play my C giant this turn. I think it would have been good to obviously get him down while there was the extra two minions on the board because it would have cost seven. As I can't do too much more, I'm going to drop my Cloud of Pain. I'm going to buff this guy up to five five. Makes him pretty painful. Five. Heal myself for two and hit with nine. And summon a recruit. So with five health left on the enemy champion. And a few good minions on the board. This looks as though it could be a win. But we need to sap. <laughs> and that minion is now miraculously a 1 1 silver hand, I think. Yep. So though he costs one mana to replay. Not going to be doing any damage to him anytime soon, so good play by the rogue. Mm, well, you can argue I should have frozen the hero, and actually, in that case, just traded away. Now, also, I would have taken damage and could have drawn a card by doing that. So, perhaps a little misplay there. Instead of freezing, I could have traded this minion away and actually froze the champion. I do need to do three damage, so he still needs to, to clear the board as much as possible. And the first thing he'll target naturally, if he's got the ability to, is my Frost Elemental. The thing that does the most damage. But because I can do three, ah, he's just willingly uh, conceded the. So, good game. A win for the Paladin deck. So that puts me at 3-1 from being 2-0 uh, from those couple of games. So, we'll just uh, jump into the chat, see if anyone's on Twitter. And to mix it up a little bit, I might do a bit of Priest Constructed shortly. And as always, if you've enjoyed these videos or you'd like to see some more or feedback and let us know what we can do that's a bit more interesting for you, a bit more relevant, uh, whether you love it, hate it, let us know. Um, you can grab me on Twitter, at FailCraftCasts. Um, we're of course on Twitch. If you're tuning on YouTube, you can see us on Twitch TV. That's twitch.com forward slash FailCraftCast. Uh, FailCraft.org for the website. And on YouTube, you can go to youtube.com forward slash FailCraftCast as well. So you can see all of our archive stuff there as well. Um, this, a bunch of other videos, lots of Hearthstone, a few other PC games as well. 